Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a care collab video regarding zygopetalums. This was started by Ninja Orchids and uh, I want to thank her for letting me come on board and do some care collab videos along with her. And there are a few other people that's also on the list. I will put their names on the screen as I go by. And um, thank you everyone. Thanks to Ninja Orchid for let, letting me be part of this care collab and to all the participants and also thank you viewers for watching this and um, hope you enjoy it. I'm going to give you the names of all the participants and then I'm going to go through the video and show you my zygos that I have in my collection. So let me go through a quick um, video to show you some of my zygos right here. I will go through each one one by one and show you how they're surviving or how they're doing under my care. I live um, in New Jersey where right now it snowed a lot. We had like about um, three to four inches of snow. Um, if you look outside, it's all snow covered. It's starting to melt already because the temperature is starting to rise a little bit. Um, anyway, so I do not have a greenhouse for winter greenhouse because I bring them inside. During the summer, I grow them outside in a mini greenhouse and the orchids are all outside except for the Miltoniopsis. They stay inside because they are the cool growers. So this, this is Zygopetalum. I put them outside, but not in direct sun. In, in a shady area of the greenhouse because right above the greenhouse is like a little hibiscus tree that covers a certain area. So the shaded plants grow go underneath that side, whereas the left-hand side of the greenhouse, it's a lot more exposure to the sun and the cattleyas and the vandas and uh, the sun lovers, sun worshippers, if you want to call it that way, <laughs> they stay on the left-hand side. So the zygos are usually on the right-hand side. So let me go through each one and show you how they're doing for me here's another one this is a uh, shine mary green gecko this one has one big suit about these are leafless of course they do tend to lose their leaves so don't worry about it um that's something that they do all the time for me anyway so here's a new growth and I don't think that's gonna put any spikes on it but here's another one now if you look at the base of the soda bulb you can see like a little bulge over here and then when you look inside you see the little thing that there is a spike now this plant has not even become mature yet. It's still like a, it's immature pseudobulb. So if these plants produce their flor inflorescence on immature pseudobulb. So, so this one is starting to put a little spike over here and I'm all excited. I can't wait to see it. So this one, like I said, is a Shine Mary green gecko. So this will be the first time bloom for me. So I'm excited. Now, another one that I really want to show which let me bring this one over here is this one 
you have no idea how excited I am to see this one because by the way this is the Zygo Titanic Pacific Pacific Eyes book this one just finished flowering for me and let me show you what's going on over here this is the one that I counted during my last video it had a lot of new growths in it starting here's one Here's another two. Here's two more. Now here's another one. Here's another big one. And I turn over, there's two more over here. Now this sort of bulb, it flowered, and, and I just cut the spike off. It flowered and it's still starting to put new growths at the base and also new roots at the base of the plant. So. That's how it's been growing. And here is another new pseudobulb that rotted. But when I cut it out, I didn't remove it completely. And it started to put a new growth right here. And I see something green out here. I'm not sure if that's gonna grow. But again, so these are starting to put out um, pseudobulb, starting to put out new growth. So what you have to do is when, if you feel like it's rotting, just cut out the rot so that it won't um, travel to the other side of the plant it probably just stop the rot right in its place and uh, just treat it with cinnamon and hydrogen peroxide and spray some cinnamon on it so the rot won't spread so this is okay but I, I don't know how how it's gonna be if I should transplant this into a bigger pot or just let it be because with all these growths coming in, I have a feeling it will need to have a lot of um, fertilizer to help the growth of the plant, um, I'm guessing. But at the same time, you don't, you don't want to over fertilize and cause the roots to rot because too much fertilizer can cause the roots to have brownish tips and they could, you know, not absorb the um, uh, too much fertilizer they cannot absorb too much so it, i don't want to cause any root rot so i'm excited i want to see how many of this will really grow if they will all grow it's just a few that's gonna grow so can't wait can't wait to see this one and now the, like i said the shape was like of the sort of bulb is like uh like an oval, oval shape but the new sort of bulbs are just trying to get the shape it doesn't even completely form so excited and like I said, the spikes are on the newest growth. Uh, now, like I said, with the temperature, I keep them in the summer, it stays outside. We get like between 80 and 95 degrees. And uh, winter, of course, we get snow. So I bring them indoors and they grow inside. So half, six months, it's inside the house. Half the other half, it's uh, outside, so. The next one I want to show is this um, Galliopetalum starburst parkside. It's uh, won an award from AMAOS, Award of Merit from American Orchid Society. So this one has got one big pseudobulb in the middle and it's got two new growths coming right here. And if I turn around, I can show you the oldest with the bulbous right here. And it's putting out another new growth right here. So this one, this sort of bulb is putting out three new growths. And I don't think these are gonna flower or maybe I'm wrong. I don't see any, but it's probably too early to even see if it's ready to flower yet. So. Maybe I'm hoping this one will, because this one, I think it's already too far gone. Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, because they do flower on immature soda bulbs. So I'm hoping that one of them will put out a new spike for me. This is my first time, um, it'll be my first time blooming for this one. This one here is my Zygonesia Rockburn Sea Foam. I got this um, summer of last year from eBay. It came to me, it was in flower, but for some reason, I guess it was so damp when it came to me, it got like a rot. I guess from transportation, 
or whatever, it just rotted. So I cut the soda bulb right here and I put hydrogen peroxide and this one too. There were two soda bulbs that were rotting. So I put hydrogen peroxide and I put cinnamon on it. And um, this soda bulb somehow survived the rot. It didn't get infested. The rot didn't get um, get to this uh, soda bulb. So it's starting to put out a new growth. And I don't think this one is gonna spike for me because it's probably not strong enough or mature enough to spike. So anyway, I, I want the plant to get nice and healthy before it puts out a flower for me. So this is a bluish colored flower. Here's another one. This is um, Calia Pellum Arlene Armour variety conching. This is um, got a new growth starting right here. This pseudobulb thin flower and uh, it's also putting out another new growth right here. It didn't flower last with this pseudobulb it didn't flower but it flowered for me the year before on the on the other pseudobulb so I'm hoping these new ones will flower for me. Now remember they are all fragrant and um, that's the best part of the zygo. This one here is a no ID zygo that I got from Trader Joe's. Now it was in bloom last September when I got it and um, it put out two new growths right here and um, it, as you can see they put out a spike right here and I just had to stake it because I broke one of the spikes uh, with by accident because it was not staked. So now I know that the spikes are there and I'll be very careful. This is where I broke the spikes. So this one's got only one, but it, let me see if I can show you where I broke it. It only got one, but because it's in there. So if you, if you see, this is two spikes in this one pseudo bulb. It's got two spikes. See right here, maybe if I can move these two soda bulbs. I mean, one soda bulb with two spikes, and this is the one that I broke, so I'm very upset. But it's okay, this one's coming along very nice. So that's the uh, one, and this is the third one. So there are three spikes in this one, and I had to stake them all because I didn't want to break anymore. So that's the no ID that I got from Trader Joe's in September. The plant is really nice and healthy. Now this plant over here is um, Cynesia da of Peace. Again, it's not from Calapana Tropicals. I got it from Mavi Orchid Whisperer. That they get it from Calapana and they send it back, um, send, sell it on their website. It's on Facebook. So this one has got this growth. It's had another one, but it um, didn't do well. But it is putting out a new growth. I'm sorry, it's not focusing. It's not able to... You see that, that little thing over there? That is a new growth. So this is another uh, zygo of mine. It's not doing good, but I'm hoping the new growth will survive because I got it like, um, like this and it's been like this for the longest time. So I'm not sure what's wrong with this plant. So here's another one. And the last two one, Last two zygo that I'm going to be showing is this one right here and this one. See to see the flowers. This one pretty. It's a no ID zygo that I got from uh, Trader Joe's. Though I did have a similar zygo like this a few years ago and which didn't make it. And I still had the label so I think it's the same one. So even though it's a no ID zygo that I got it like that. It did come with this label, but it doesn't say much other than the fact that it's a zygo petalum. So I'm just gonna leave it back in there. So, but I'm gonna go by this ID 
but it's not the right one. So if anybody know what the correct ID is, and if we could leave a comment, that'll be great. Anyway, so these are the ones, two orchids that said, these are the ones that's got two spikes. This flower, this flower is almost uh, finished blooming. So that's one. I don't see any new growth yet, but I think the, once this, see this is another one where the new growth didn't really form, but instead of forming a new growth, it just turned out to be spikes and the new growth kind of just like they make it, it just rotted. So I'm gonna pull that one out and check it in the garbage. So this one, the new growth didn't make it, but I'm hoping that by whatever reason that this new growth will put out another new growth and take on from there. So this is the, and of course it's very fragrant. So that's that one. And here's the other one, the same thing, different, um, plant different i mean a different part this plant um see the new growth is, it hasn't even developed yet and it's already the spike got bigger and it's already gotten taller than the new growth it didn't even even form the suit above yet but um new growth um sorry got distracted by the water dripping um yeah so this one because I watered it yesterday, so there's still a little bit of water at the base of the decorative part. Not much, but it's not soaking up the water. Because I do like to keep my zygopetalums kind of on the dryers. Like, not completely dry, but not soaking wet. I water it and let the water drain out. And then till the next... Like, I water once a week, so I water it weekly. But if I do notice that it's getting a little bit too dry, I just give it like a little trickle, nothing much, just to keep it going. But I notice that once you wet it too much, you keep it too moist, that's when I get started getting the rot on the soda bulb. So here's my other last orchid that I have, the zygopetalum. I have two more other, but they are like um, not doing good, so I don't want to show it. And I now I'll I'll if it if it makes, I will put up another post about it. So this is my last one. And um, yeah, they're very fragrant. It's very, very sweet, nice smelling, like a floral fragrance to it, not like a spicy, peppery fragrance of anything. So yeah, so this is a beautiful zygos are very pretty, very fragrant. If you ever want one, go for it. And um, it's like. I think the Gallia Petalum is more heat tolerant, so there are some that needs a little bit cooler, but not like Miltoniopsis. I noticed they don't need to be that cool like the Miltoniopsis. They will take a little bit of the heat. So, yeah, get the Zygo if you want. Uh, it's very fragrant, especially, I know that some people like uh, fragrant flowers. They collect only fragrant flowers, so here's one for you. And now remember, these leaves get big, oval, like long strappy leaves that can burn very easily if it's in direct sun. So try to keep it in the shadier section. Give it a little bit more light than um, than a Philanopsis and it'll take it. But don't let it be in direct sun. Like this right here is getting the morning morning sun, but that's only because I keep them here because they're in flower and I'm, and I'm taking a video. Usually they sit in my grow area and over here, I keep only the ones that's in flower, so I could see it. That's why these, but um, usually they grow in my grow area. So that's my zygo. So, and thanks everybody for watching. And let me bring everything back. So that's my strappy looking plans for the day and uh, thanks everyone for watching and thank you ninja orchids and everybody else and all of you watching and being a part of this video please subscribe and we'll see you soon and thank you bye